My name is Swami and uh, I'm going to talk to you on a topic in mathematics. I looked at the list of topics and uh, I saw that Sal had covered pretty much all of the topics in Khan Academy already. So I decided to do something a little different. It's also concerned with mathematics and it's called the Seven Bridges of Konigsberg. Now Konigsberg, and I hope I pronounce it right, was a town uh, in the Austro-Prussian Empire. It's part of modern Russia now. And uh, the citizens of uh, Konigsberg, way back in the 1700s, they had a problem. And uh, they had seven bridges in their city. And uh, the city looked a little like this. There was this nice river flowing through. There was a big bridge. There was a small island. There's a big island and a small island. Let's call it B and L. This is the north bank and this is the south bank. And as the name suggests, they had seven bridges, two connecting the north bank to the big island, two connecting the south bank to the big island, one connecting the north to the little island, another to the south bank, and one connecting the big and the little island. So there you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the problem that uh, occupied all the citizens of Konigsberg was this. Can you traverse all the seven bridges without ever going back on any one of the bridges? So let's let's take a shot at this, okay? Um, let's say we started at the North Bank. We came down to the Big Island, from the Big Island to the South Bank, back from the South Bank to the Big Island, and then to the North Bank, back again, and now at the little island, we have a choice. We could go this way to the big island or this way to the southern bank. Now, if we went to the southern bank, we couldn't go back through either of these two bridges and we would have just have come back through this, right? So that wouldn't work. And if we went to the big island, again, all the five bridges have been traversed before. And so you see that uh, this method of traversal doesn't work. Now, the citizens of uh, Konigsberg, they tried and tried and uh, they just couldn't find a way. And pretty soon they realized or rather they came to the conclusion that this is not solvable, but uh, they just couldn't prove it. And it was around this time that a uh, young man who was subsequently to become famous mathematician came along. His name was Euler, E-U-L-E-R, and it's usually pronounced Euler. And Euler looked at this problem and what he did was to reduce it to a diagram that looks like this. Four points, two lines here, two lines here, one line here, one line here. And that's it. That was Euler's contribution to solving the seven bridges of Konigsberg and uh, that was a great addition to the field of mathematics. Obviously, there's more to the story and let's explore what really happened. Let's take a look at this uh, diagram. It looks like a triangle. Uh, there are three points. Uh, we're going to call those points vertices. And the sides of the triangle are the lines connecting the vertices. They're called edges. And uh, we have Another term that we're going to introduce that's called degree and degree is simply the number of lines at a vertice or the number of edges at a vertice. So that means A has a degree of 2, B has again a degree of 2 and so does C. Now let's look at what this means. Let's say you want to traverse the triangle. You want to start at any one of the points, any one of the vertices and go through all of the edges without traversing any of them twice. Could you do that? If you start from A and you went down A to B, B to C and C back to A. Wonderful. We achieved that. Let's see if you went from B in another direction whether you could get the same result. Let's say you start from B, you went this way to A, back to C and then again back to B. Again, you're able to do it. Now let's uh, take a moment and see what's happening here. Now each of those vertices has a degree of 2. Uh, that means they're even numbered. And uh, imagine 
a vertice that has two edges and let's say you're starting from here uh, so you probably went out through one of those edges and you came back to the other so what that means is if a vertice has two edges and uh, you started at that vertice you went out and you came back you would have to end here so if this is the origin this is also the end and uh, it doesn't matter if it was two or four or six as long as it's even so if you had four vertices and let's assume there were different points connecting on the other edge other other side of the edges you went out through this then you came back through this then you again went out through this and then again you came back through this so you would have to stop here and because you couldn't go back again through any of those vertices so as long as you had an even number uh, of even degree vertices if it's the origin the origin is also the end point now what about the midpoints take point c you came in from a here and then you would go out to b here right now in every midpoint you can imagine this happening again you come in through an edge and you go back and it again doesn't matter if you have 2 or 4 or 6 as long as it's even you know that you'll neither start nor end at a midpoint you came in through this you went out through this you came in through this and you went out through that so all midpoints are always even because you always come in first and then you go out and you come in first and then you go out and you neither start there nor end there so all midpoints are even so now you can see pretty much how this works right now we have already figured out all midpoints have a even degree and if a origin has even degree then the origin and the destination are the same now what we're going to try and see if there are odd degrees so let's draw another line connecting a and c now you can see the degrees this is a degree of 3 this is a degree of 3 and this is a degree of 2 okay now if i were to start at b which has a even degree i could go down here then i could go down here and uh, if i came back here i would be stuck because i've already traversed this path hmm so let's see if it makes a difference if i went some other path if from a i actually went down back to c like this no i'm still stuck and you can try this yourself whatever i do whenever i start from b i can't get back to b and i can't traverse the path what if i start from a i could go down this to c come back from c to a move down from a to b and then b to c fantastic so i've actually covered the whole diagram traversing every edge exactly once and uh, i started at a and ended at c which are odd degree vertices and let's see if, what happens if i start at c then i would first go this way to a come back to c move down from c to b and go from b to a now look what happened i started at c and i ended at a uh, both are uh, odd degree vertices now think about this if you had any odd degree vertices and let's say you had three lines if you went out through one then you would come back to the other and then you would again go back or the other so when you have a odd degree vertices either you leave there or you arrive there so if you arrive there first then you went out again and then you would arrive there again so a odd degree vertices has to be either the origin or the destination it can't be both because then you would need a even number of uh, vertices and it can't be a midpoint for the same reason that we already know that all midpoints have to have a even degree so now we pretty much got this diagram figured out uh, let's try something a little different take a look at this diagram it's got four vertices a b c and d and there's a line connecting b and d and you can see the degrees of the vertices 2 3 2 and 3 respectively now here we already know that if you start at one of the odd numbered vertices you will land up at the other so let's try the route we'll start at d go this way 
C to B, B to D, D to A, A to B, and we are done. You started at D and ended at the other odd numbered vertex, which is B, and you can try this yourself. And if you try starting from C or A, you'll find that you can't traverse it. But what we're really interested in is what happens if there are four odd numbered vertices and we can convert this diagram to one such by having another line connecting A and C. And now you have A and C having three degrees each. And let me remove these green lines because we're going to try this all over again. Okay. So we have a degree of three here and a degree of three here. And all right, now let's start. If you start from A and you go all the way down to C, then you come back to B, back to A, down to D. We seem to be doing good progress. Then if you come to C, then you're stuck because you've traversed all the vertices leading up to C. And you can try this yourself. Anytime you have a diagram with more than two odd numbered vertices, you cannot traverse it for the reason that we mentioned below. Every odd point has to be either an origin or a destination and you can have only one origin and one destination and so you can't have more than two odd points if you want to traverse all of them. Now let's get back to the original bridges of Königsberg problem. So when Euler reduced it to this diagram, what he really did was represent the north bank by a vertice, the south by another, the two islands by two more vertices and then he connected them with each edge representing a bridge. And now let's take a look at the degrees of each of them. So the north has three, the south has three, the little has three, and the big island has five. There you go, you have five odd vertices, and therefore this is not a problem that can be solved. You cannot have a path where you go from one place to another, traversing all the bridges exactly once without coming back on at least one of them. Okay, fantastic. Now we've figured out the solution to the seven bridges of Königsberg, but uh, you might be tempted to ask, hey, what's all this got to do with mathematics? So the answer is this, uh, way back in 1700s, what Euler was doing was he was really trying to solve a problem, but in the process he hit upon something. It was this notation. He, if you look at it, he didn't try to draw a very large north bank or a very large south bank. The dimensions didn't matter. What really mattered was how many edges connect the north to the big island, how many the north to the little island, and so on and so forth. And this method of representation eventually led to an entire new field of mathematics called graph theory. And even today, uh, it's used to study, for instance, uh, how computer networks work and, uh, and many other applications in science and mathematics. The other field that this solution contributed to was topology, which is really the study of uh, different shapes and the relationship between shapes. Uh, in, in And this was the very first time uh, that uh, somebody had published that would lead to something in topology. So Euler's Seven Bridges of Königsberg is often considered uh, the first paper in graph theory as well as topology. So, and that's why it's so significant. That concludes uh, this uh, video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you found it useful. And if not, I'm sure it's at least an interesting puzzle that you can try out with your friends. My name is Swami. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.